Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Android News Byte. Today, I wanted to highlight the new release of the Eden emulator on Android. This update brings us to version 0.0.3, and with it, they have introduced three different branches for us to choose from. So today, I would like to talk about these new changes that we saw in this update, while also explaining what these three versions mean and which one that you should use. During the last week, the folks behind the Nintendo Switch emulator Eden have released a couple of updates. So first, let's look over the universal changes that the emulator is available on. So you can see, we got some just-in-time back-end improvements. They have improved the fast GPU time, fast CPU time option. They have fixed FMV green screens on all platforms. Hardware accelerated video decoding for H.264, VP8, and VP9 are on all supported GPUs. They fixed Mario Kart 8 Deluxe with their controller applet freeze, and they fixed crashes when attempting to read or apply new Switch 2 compatibility updates. The new update will now show the status of your battery in the Switch Home menu. They added an area sampling filter, which is best served when using a resolution higher than your display's resolution. They have stubbed Activate Debug Mouse for the Gex Trilogy, so anyone who's been trying to play that can likely play it a little easier. They have improved avatar selection and editing from within the firmware. And we now have Airplane Mode implementation. The Custom CPU Tick option has been added, so this change emulated the CPU's tick that can improve performance at the cost of a little bit of stability. There is a new toggle for Vulkan RAII, and disabling this option may increase memory and GPU utilization, but it may also fix some issues with bundled games or on exit activity switching. There's going to be more descriptive error messages. And now there is firmware version validity checks. So if you install a supported firmware and the app tells you that it's too new, then your firmware is likely going to be corrupt or missing. So be sure to try again. I also think looking into the renderer section is also a good idea since those changes are applied to the Android build as well. So Gamer64 added sample shading to improve the shader and image quality. They did some work on the MSAA improvements, and this will actually improve emulating Civilization 7 as shown in the showcase channel. There have been various fixes to Vulkan and its, its extensions. So many black screen issues have been fixed. There's now a 0.25x resolution option. And you can see the rest of these fixes right here. As we move on to the Android specific changes, we can see there is support for various game hubs. There is improved Eden's Veil layout. They have removed frame skip entirely while the team is working on it. They've added an option to utilize the native keyboard over the firmware keyboard. They have added shader building to the performance overlay. They brought over several desktop settings and they improved the multiplayer front end, fixing up the creation of a public lobby, viewing a public lobby, real-time verification of room metadata, and an automatic IP setter. The driver fetcher will automatically recommend the driver depending on your device. 
and it will then go out and download and install it for you instantly. I really like this new feature. There's been an improvement to the compatibility with older devices. A device info overlay for the SOC, GPU, device models, firmware version, and the rest of these changes here. With this new release, we're given the option of three different APK files for us to download on Android. And I've been seeing this question pop up time and time again. So let's go over the three different versions of the Eden emulator that are available now on Android. First up, we have the standard version. And you'll see this in the list of the three APK files that can be downloaded on the Eden release page. It actually does not have any descriptive text to it at all. So it's just going to say the version number that you see here. This is considered the universal APK file for virtually all Android smartphones and tablets. And from what I've read, if you have a Mali GPU and anyone else who has issues with the other two releases, you'll want to use the standard build going forward. As far as legacy support is concerned, this release was built for those with an older Snapdragon CPU. We've seen some games require fixes on hardware with the Adreno 600 series GPU, which is what is included in the older Qualcomm Snapdragon chipsets. From what I've read, anyone with a Snapdragon 888 or older, you're going to want to use the legacy version of the Eden emulator to get the best performance and the least number of bugs. And then we get to the optimized build. This is what I have been testing on my Red Magic 10 Pro with its Snapdragon 8 Elite chipset. But this version is going to be useful for those with GPUs that have a feature like frame generation or any other per device features really. So anyone with a phone or tablet that uses a Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 or newer, you're probably going to want to go with the optimized version. Honestly, I'm not sure what other per device features are supported with the optimized build. It will be something that I look into further. But a good way to check for frame generation support is to first find out which GPU is inside your phone. There are apps in the Google Play Store like CPU-Z and Device Info that will help tell you the exact GPU in your phone. Then you can take that GPU name and then do a web search to see if that GPU supports frame generation. I literally just type in the words, does the Adreno 830 GPU support frame generation? And then I check the first few results to see if the GPU in your device will benefit from the optimized build of the Eden emulator on Android. There was definitely a lot to unpack here, but I do hope this video was able to help show what's new in the recent updates to Eden Switch emulator. Going forward, I hope to see the developers unify these builds, as long as it does not bloat the size of the APK file too much. I would like to see them build in some sort of hardware check to determine which code should be run on which device. Now, if you still have any questions, then don't hesitate to leave a comment down below. Just don't forget to leave a like on this video to help spread the word. And subscribe to the channel too for more Android emulation content like this.